Shouldn't I be further along in my life? It feels like I'm doing the same thing, day in and day out. How do I go from where I'm at to where I want to be? There's got to be something more out there for me. Is it too much of a risk? What are people going to think? What if I fail? What if I fail? What if I fail? It's time to stop holding back. It's time to stop making excuses. It's time to take a leap. It's time to find that drive, that passion, that fire. It's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's time to be at the top of the game. I'm done with being content. Welcome to the Finding Fire Podcast. All right, well, typically we just, you know, dive right in. Okay. Um, I'm here today with Kiwa Koyak and Jay Del Castro. And Jay holds a special spot in our hearts. Uh, Jay, and when I talk about impact, this guy nails it. Uh, Jay was our high school marketing teacher and taught us for three to four years throughout our high school years. And Jay personally changed my life for the better. Um, we'll just say that in high school, I wasn't the most studious <laughs> individual. <laughs> and somehow I wound up in Marketing 101. And out of all the teachers that I had at that period of my life, Jay was really the one teacher that was able to connect with me and for whatever reason, bring out the best of me and really change the trajectory of everything I did from that point forward. Um, and that's how I wound up in business and sales and going on to get my master's. So I credit a lot of my success to Jay Bell Castro. Um, so yeah, Jay, why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and sure. where you're at today. Well, thank you for that compliment. That, that, that means a lot. And, um, you know, Matt, maybe the reason I connected with you is because I was that type of student. I, I absolutely was not the top of my class and, and I think academically wasn't wasn't really um, struggled to figure out who I was until I stepped into a marketing class. So as you talked about me that way, which I really appreciate, I would talk about my deck advisor, Earl Brown, in the same type of context. So when I got into that environment, as I struggled through math and I struggled through English, I got into marketing and all of a sudden it's like, hey, this makes sense. It connects. It, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. And I got pushed into the class because, of course, my mom said, you got to take this marketing class and you got to listen to your mom, of course. And so I did. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it, was, it was amazing. I, I remember being a sophomore at Denfeld and that, that sophomore year I ran for the, the deck of vice president and I got it. And, and, and from that moment forward, I ended up in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on my first deck of, uh, trip. And I knew from that moment I wanted to be a deck advisor. Didn't know I wanted to be a teacher per se, but I knew I wanted to be a deck advisor because of the power the program had on me. And so, um, she 17 years later in that, you know, I got hired in, in Proctor, started a DECA program at the Duluth Business University, which was a, a total rush coming out of college. And then being in front of college age students, and that was terrifying, but ex exhilarating at the same time. I started a DECA program there. And then in 1995, I had the opportunity to go to Proctor, and I always knew I wanted to be at the at the high school level. And I'll never I'll never forget walking and having my first DECA meeting, and I brought donuts, and and I'm like, they're gonna love me. And, and I remember walking into the end of the room, and you might remember Mr. Knox, and he was the advisor before me, and they didn't love me at all. <laughs> so I walk in, and I'm like, oh my goodness, who are these kids? And how is this going to work? And it was just totally different than the vision that I, that I thought of. Um, but it didn't take long to start to recruit some different kind of kids into the program. And, sure. and then, um, you know, then it just, it was it, oh, a total gift. I can't, I can't say it more than a total gift to be able to spend the time I did in Proctor in that capacity. Still to the day, the most enjoyable experience I've had professionally was was working with people like you and and it just the memories the friendships the camaraderie and and all of that we didn't even talk about the success which we were very fortunate to have but really it was just you know to be able to bring that out 
and the sheer experiences like I had as a 15 year old kid um, was fantastic. And so it was, uh, it was unbelievable. And you know, Mr. Watkins is my principal, was so amazing to give me the latitude and the trust to do what I thought was right. And so I got in there and I made some changes right away and he supported that. And uh, yeah, it was just fantastic. I mean, I just so, I, I think back to the memories and, and, and the people and the late relationships. Mm -hmm. It's just been, uh, that'll be my fondest, I think, I think it'll be the fondest part in my now 26 years in public education. Working with kids is still the best part. That's awesome. Yeah. Amazing. In fact, today it was interesting. Now, uh, now I'm in a role of a high school principal. This just just got thrusted into um, a superintendent position, which is a whole other learning experience. Um, but today I got to teach a class, and, and it was again, it was back to the 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 part that I think I love most is just the interaction with kids. And I got to spend two hours today at Two Rivers High School teaching seventh graders, and it was the best part of the day. <laughs> so, so when, you, when you say it's like the best feeling, it's the yeah. best part of the day, what about it is the best for you? What, what's your why? I think the why is, is the easeability of, of that experience. The, I don't wanna say comfortability, because I think comfort builds complacency and that can throw things off. But I, I think it's just the, the ability to understand the power of the position if I, can, if I can bring something to the table to encourage others, the spin out of that is immense. And you know, over 17 years in Proctor and how many hundreds if not thousands of students, it's amazing how many of them went into business. And I would start off, and you guys probably remember me saying this, in the first marketing classes, hey, I got two things I hope for you. Either you love it or you hate it. Either one is okay. Because if you, if you dislike it, then you're not gonna spend money at the college level to figure out that, geez, I'm now in $30,000 two years in and I can't stand it. Or you love it and you found a house, you know, you found a home into our, or you proctor and, and, and then you can continue on. But that was the big part is just to bring the joy, the love, and the ability to be different. I mean, what we did was different. It wasn't teaching English, although that's important. It was this, you know, the traveling with kids. And there was never a year, we did that for 17 years, there was never a year that we traveled and we went to the International DECA Conference every year that it wasn't some kid's first time on an airplane. And that was such a cool experience to be able to share, <laughs> you know, what it meant. And, and you know, the guys that we hung around. I mean, we had fun with those experiences. And, and even with some of the prior classmates, like yeah. that would come on those trips. Yes. I just remember Billy Shelton. Like oh, that's yeah. like to me, like it's like <laughs> this guy wants to come with like that's a bit of a time yeah. it is yeah. to come back and yeah. still hang out and be involved. In well, that. You, you have to surround yourself with quality people and and, and Billy Shelton is a, a very close and dear friend of mine. And you know, the success that we had was all about the people that surrounded that program. And Billy was instrumental. In that, but uh, yeah, and, and you know, he had a great experience as a student. Come back and, and give that experience back. But Billy understood that too. I mean, it was the part of it was you guys know we were like we were like kids on those trips. You know, and the other part that I that I I love so much is we never cheated. We never did anything underneath the table. Everything we did was based on hard work, effort, in the model that good wasn't good enough. Great was the only option. And it was throttled down. And and I know, you know, high school kids, Proctor, there's you know, some things that go on outside of school, but I never worried about that in the program. I mean, think of the places that the students were able to go. And and it, when we were there to compete, we, we worked hard and we played yeah. hard. And the playing hard piece was all above board. And, and, and that was yeah. the part that Billy and I would share with every class is, we want you to remember that when you experience this type of enjoyment, you know, right now you, 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 get, with, you get with adults and you know, you're gonna go visit, you bring something to drink and you, you, know, you have a beer or whatever, which is great, I, mean, I do that. But what we try to get across to students is think of the fun you had with just being with another person or a group of people that didn't have anything to do with any other outside influence than that. And that was the part where yeah, you're gonna experience all these other things, but remember how cool life can be in the moment, and let's live in the moment, yeah. 
was just it was just unbelievable. That was actually like you had said, first time on a plane or first time whatever. Yeah. That was when I went. It was the first time in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did not know what Nashville had to offer until I was there. And I, I remember, I think I sprained my ankle because we were so excited. I was like, yeah. arms around people. I love Nashville, and it was that's something I will never forget. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah, we, we, I mean, we created so many memories, yeah. and for the most part, when we were great, we took you know all these different trips yeah. to different towns, and we got to experience a lot of different things. For people that you know maybe listening and don't know what DECA is, can you explain sure, yeah. what that is? DECA is a, is a co-curricular activity. So we know extracurriculars that you know you play football or you're in, in, in you know a different type of organization. DECA supports the curriculum that's learned in the classroom. So in order to be good at DECA, you need to learn the language. And so as the teacher, my job was to teach the principles of marketing and, and economics and advertising. And so through the knowledge obtained in the classroom, then you'd apply it through DECA competition. And Proctor, we, we focused in, and I'm not sure how or why, but I'm glad we did, on projects, chapter projects. And so we, we would get these ideas, and then the great part was is it was the students driving these, these ideas and putting them into difficult situations. I think of the year with you guys, I mean, working with Amsoil. Yep. And I'll never forget I'll never forget being at Blackwoods. You guys might remember this. We're at Blackwoods and we're gonna to present to the CEO, the head of promotion and our good friend, um, Ed Newman, who did yeah. all of their promotion. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget being there. And the first question out of, out of their mouth is, tell us why a synthetic motor oil is better than a conventional motor oil. And tell us that in about a minute. And Alex Ruff stood up and knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And I and I and I remember thinking, what the heck? Really? This is what you guys are gonna lead with? But what it did is establish the level that we came in with. We were not there as high school kids. We were there as we know your industry. We've we've studied it, we know it. Let's let's help you make this a success. We were we were prepared. And Absolutely. We, we studied hard for yes. that interview. <laughs> and you're 17 years old and yeah. you're gonna stand in front of a bunch of you know, execs, yeah. like that's nerve wracking. Absolutely. And it does help that Al did snow. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no doubt, no yeah. doubt. But you guys do that anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. So yeah. yeah, and that was such a I mean such a great project yeah. and like how many aspects of business that we use mm -hmm. in like creative marketing and creative sales. Yeah. yeah. Like how they didn't realize that you should put advertisements yeah. into yeah. a Fishing regulation yeah. book, yeah. like that was huge. Right? Yeah, yeah, and that was the that was so cool because that that project could <laughs> take it even a step further. That project started with me being on a riding lawnmower in the backyard, and my daughter comes out and says, "Dad, you got a phone call." And I said, "I'm mowing the lawn." She said, "That ah, sounds important. You better take it and get off the lawnmower." Going, and it's Ed Newman. And he said, I have this idea that I think Proctor Decker could help Amsoil with, and I think Amsoil could help Proctor Decker with, but that would have never happened if the ex if if the the perception of the program wasn't as strong, because this guy was putting his he was putting his neck out. I mean, yeah. we work with a bunch of high school kids on trying to figure out why a more motor oil needs to be marketed differently. You're gonna, I mean, you're a big corporation, what the heck? Yeah. But from that perspective, that was the cool part that the the program had elevated to such a level that it was now being recognized as a, a valuable component to the community. And so we were, you know, we get, I get calls, we'd like to do this, can you help? It was always cool to say, yeah, yeah, we could, we could help. Yeah. You know, never knowing how it was going to end up. In that case, yeah. it ended up really well. But How do you think that came to be where, you know, people within the community now came to you for like the expert advice? Yeah. Was I, it through like prior projects yeah. or is it through like just your outreach or how would you I, I would say the you know the, the the prior success the projects that came before in this case the Amsoil project um, you know we were doing things that uh, that were pretty I mean now that I reflect back how you guys were able to elevate your <laughs> your young game to that level is pretty amazing um, but it did, and I think people took notice of that. And so it wasn't this, you know, you think of, you know, can you help out the band? Oh yeah, here's 20 bucks. But, but it wasn't that, it was, can you help us? 
because we, you know, we really need it. And that was the fun part because I knew as the advisor, that was real deal stuff. I, I couldn't teach you out of a textbook that experience. That was something we had to live. And, and the beautiful part is we lived it together. And it was just the, the camaraderie piece of all that. It was nothing short of special. Yeah, I mean, the experience that we gained, I mean, experience is the greatest yeah. teacher, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to go out, you have to do it, you have to live it. Yeah. And learn from mistakes and yeah. Absolutely. Keep, keep climbing. I just think that Nashville, <laughs> I mean, we could go on from stories from that that trip, but I'll, I'll never remember <laughs> Billy Shelton going, yeah, I want to take the guys, the guys down to a concert. And I go, Billy, you think that's a good idea? Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> and then Billy coming back then, I go, we had a problem. <laughs> Is everybody alive? <laughs> so, yeah, okay, good. So, <laughs> Check to make sure everyone's here. <laughs> we all made it back. <laughs> It was always such a, and the great part was, is I always felt so respected by the students. I knew that, you know, they, there were very, very few times that I was ever feeling like the students were doing something they shouldn't or that disrespect of why are you doing something you shouldn't. And I think that is a testament to the fact that we just had such a good relationship. Yeah, that's amazing. There's a pretty broad range too, I know, like between <sighs> younger classmen and seniors yeah. from your fresh sophomore freshman all the way up to your seniors yeah. and it was pretty cool because then there was a big range within your classes and how they performed and all the extra correct quote unquote extra curriculum yeah, they did yeah. you know but i think everyone i know when we were in that class during it and those hours put in afterwards yeah. it was like we're here to get stuff done yep. you know and i think that's kind of a cool thing that's built from yeah. what you created yeah. you know yeah yeah, I remember in the Nashville Convention Center and you guys made it into the finals. Now you went from 220 projects that have earned the right to be at that national conference now to the top 10. And I, I remember walking up and, and you guys were all getting ready and, and to go in and make the final presentation and the presenters were there. And I walk up and Billy grabbed me and he goes, we're done. Nothing left to say. Look at him. Look at him. All we can do now is pat him on the back and let him go. And, and it was awesome. And I remember Billy would sneak his way in to kind of see his goal was always to see the reaction of yeah. the presenters as they came up. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, "Yeah, no, we, we got this. Cool. <laughs> so it was cool. Like, Confidence. Oh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, like I said, just such a, such a blessing. I can't, I can't say it any different than a total blessing to have that opportunity. We had actually talked about as far as like how to get you know, students or people, it doesn't really matter who, to a certain level, is it like through encouragement? Is it through tough love? Is it through like honesty? I mean, it could be a combination of any of those, but yeah, I mean, from your perspective, what do you think is like something that really, you know, gets people to that next level or to the level they need to be? I think it's, it's, it's having to have the courage to know what lever to pull when. And if your arsenal is only that in your face, you know, I remember playing hockey and, you know, Coach had a heater hanging out of his mouth, grabbed me the face mask. You know, there, there is some time when that worked out pretty well. In fact, the year that you guys came through, we had five projects at the national conference. We had five that advanced on, and one of the five was had great potential, but didn't really work as hard as they should have. And that was a moment of I just remember saying to the student, "Here's the deal. It's, it kind of sucks, and you've got this amount of time to figure it out. Figure it out." And they did. They they were able to get to the next level. But I don't think in the case, um, for some reason it came really natural to me to seem to have the right word at the right time. And I, and I could feel it when I had you or them. I mean, you just, you realize at that moment they're hanging on every word. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Herb Brooks fan, a huge yeah. Herb Brooks fan. So I studied and it's, and it sounds funny, but I never went to a national conference without watching Miracle a few times. And I would study the reaction and how he, you know, that interaction, sometimes it's tough, sometimes it's total support, but it was, it was, there's certainly a strong foundation that has to be put in place. And if that foundation of trust and respect is there, then it isn't personal. It's about, it's about performance. Yeah. And I think that that was the part where, uh, and, and I was, you know, I guess very fortunate that most of the time it was not having to pull the lever of, of anger, but it was more of you know, let's think about what we're going to do to make it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, again. yeah, yeah, yes, again, again, again. I just watched it a couple of weeks ago. Awesome. It doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. any, any time. It's, yeah. it's a great movie. Yeah. So. And I, I think you just, 
mentioned something that me and Pete talk about a lot with, because we're both in sales, mm -hmm. and you first have to get that foundation yeah. and build that trust and build that relationship. Once you have that, your sales come so much easier and you have that relationship and they will keep coming back to you and keep you know, performing and putting mm -hmm. in orders and vice versa, you get back to them and like, hey, I wanna do the best job, I wanna provide the best product I yeah. can for you and that just forms in this relationship. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, without strong, you know, people have to realize that it isn't about you, it is about us. And I think we're unfortunately, we're living in a society right now that it seems it's only about me or I, and, and it's a real, it's really, really challenging. And, I, and, and I'm very blessed now to work in the, in the level of education that I'm doing, you know, with just everything that has changed so drastically, the professional teachers I'm working with right now, it's a real us mentality. And so from that perspective, it's, you know, you, somebody, if I'm gonna buy something from you, yeah, you're gonna benefit, you're gonna make the commission, but what am I gonna get? You know, and I always talked about, and you might have remembered this, when we talk about a salesman, that's derogatory. Anybody can be a salesman because that's the person that's selling to benefit them. A salesperson is selling something to make that experience mutually beneficial. And so from that perspective, I think um, everything that I try to do is to be mutually beneficial, absolutely. And if you feel that, I mean, I like, I'm a person that I like, once I find something I like, if it's a manufacturer of a car, if it's a snowmobile, a boat, if I've got a good experience with the product and with the salesperson, that's easy for me to go back. I don't want to yeah. really replicate having to rebuild the relationship. It's more how do I foster it to keep it going. That being said, there are times I'm like, I don't like what, what I see, or you got to help me. You know, I've been a customer with you for a long time, and that expectation is there as well. It wasn't. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned that you're now at a higher level of education. Yeah. You've moved on. You can tell that you have a fire for being a teacher. And clearly you haven't lost that. So what made you decide to move on to that next level? Was it just the next opportunity? Were you, you know, tired of no. the rigmarole? Or? No, I, I, I wouldn't say tired. You know, the thing that, that I would say with what, this, what I taught in the subject Remember, marketing is always evolving. You know, like we, we before we got on camera, we were talking about the stuff I taught you guys. Is it really relevant? I mean, it, it has its place, but there's so many more levels. It was the foundation. Absolutely. Where it Torn, without yeah. a doubt. But the, the idea of me being bored or complacent with it really wasn't it. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a, a wife that was a school administrator, and I, I got to watch what she was up to, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. I always... You know, I'm back to my sophomore year at Denfeld. I always looked at leadership as something that I, I wanted to be part of. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that time, the superintendent of Proctor, Diane Rochenfelds, had started a program at UMD, the first cohort to get their, their administrative license. And so she said, Jay, we've got this program. You should consider it. I think you'd be a good candidate. And I did. And, uh, and I'll tell you, I, my last year at Proctor was 2012. And we were in Salt Lake City, which is a really awesome place. Nashville's mm -hmm. Nashville's awesome. As a Salt Lake. And and we were in Salt Lake and um, we ended up taking second place in the world in that, that year. It wasn't that the program had gone down. Um, I remember leaving that leaving the Delta Center and uh, and we're walking out and and Billy grabbed me and he, and he grabbed me by the arm and he said, Turn around. He said, this is probably the last time we're ever going to see this. And I, and I froze. And I looked at him. I mean, it was a very emotional moment for us because we've been doing this now for so many years. But it was, it, I was ready to do something different. The question I always ask myself professionally is, the process I do to connect with kids, will it work with adults? Built on this mutual respect, trust, you know, this sense of pushing beyond where they think they can be pushed. So I was curious on that. I was curious with, with what I have and what I was, I guess, blessed with to work with students would it work with adults. And I think the, the jury's still out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's different. It's so different working. But, but there is, I, I see glimmers of, of hope and, and glimmers of opportunities that way. But I left Proctor. I, I went to Sartell. And I was there for seven weeks. And after about the fourth day, I, I felt I made the, a major mistake. I called my wife and I said, I, I left Proctor. 
I asked for a leave and they didn't grant me the leave, which kind of, I was not happy about that, but that's a different story. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm thinking, come on. But anyways, um, I get there and, and about four days in, I just, I realized that I, I just, I've never made this big of a mistake. And everything happens for a reason. And, and the longer you're in this world and the more experience you have, the more you realize that. And, uh, and I remember being out on a path in Sartell and I call this, this friend of mine who's now uh, the, the elementary principal in Two Harbors. And I said, Brett, is there still an assistant principal opening? I said, I can't let anybody know that I'm here and want to get out of here. <laughs> but is there still an opening? He goes, ah, there might be. And then my wife ran into the, uh, the superintendent of Two Harbors at the time and, and said, yeah, Jay's loving to, would love to get back to Northern Minnesota. He said, we have this opening and I applied and thank goodness I got it. And I was able to leave there, but it was really a tough situation. And it was a, it was a gut check for me of, of cutting the cords of security because I was 17 years in, way into the union, secure, mm -hmm. making good money. I mean, in reality, I was making pretty good money. And, you know, so the, my life was pretty good. But you got to continue to push yourself to, to see what else is out there. And, and I'm just dumb enough to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm dumb enough to say, yeah, what the heck? What can possibly go wrong? Go to <laughs> so, Club. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I was able to start in two harbors and, uh, and that was that was great. In fact, Tim Obrecht called me. Um, that was my second year at Two Harbors, and he called and he said, "Hey, you ever thought about leaving education?" I go, "What are you talking about?" He said, "There's an awesome opportunity that I think you should look at." And it happened to be that the State Farm Insurance Agency had opened up the branch in Two Harbors. He said, "They're they're they're headhunting. I've given them your name. You got to look into it." And so I said, "Well, yeah, I'll give them my name." And uh, I started talking to the State Farm agent. And through that process, I just realized that education is really where I belong. And I went, didn't go too far down the road, um, but I, I stayed in and now, um, it was interesting. It was, then the principal at the time became interested in that state farm position. And so he went further down the road, took the position, and then I, was, I went from high school assistant principal to principal. And so from that perspective, it was, uh, it was a, another very interesting move. And now I've been a high school principal there for nine years. So, cool. yeah, time goes fast. Yeah, when one door closes, another opens. That's true. It's okay. true. kind of nice to go down that a little ways and a little screw yourself with that. Yeah, too. yeah, like, absolutely. Right, yeah, I, I'm, right. I know this is where I should be. Yep, or at absolutely. Least in this realm. Right. And I think that that's such an important piece. You know, and, and I don't say this at all to be conceited, but what I know I was blessed with was the ability to sell. I don't think the program would have found the success if I didn't sell, convince, whatever the adjective you want to use to get people in. But there was something about being thought of that way that just never sat well with me. I, I didn't, you know, the, you know, would you like to buy health insurance or life, you know, I mean, I get those calls, you know, I'm really happy with the carrier that I currently have. So I, that was part of it, but I just knew that my, my sales ability could be, could be put to better use with working with kids, especially in a marketing program. So that's, uh, that was it, so. But yeah, lots of uh, lots of different opportunities. Seventeen years, and then kind of a rapid move into different areas of education from that point. Right. So, but still enjoy going back to teaching, like you just said Absolutely. earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It grounds you into the why. I mean, you know, yeah. We're about schools are about kids, and and especially in this day and age when a lot of schools aren't even in session. You know, they, it's interesting. I was sitting with a with a prospective uh, school administrator out of the Duluth system. And she came and she needed to, she's gotta get hours to get her admin, admin license. So she had called and said, can I come spend some time? I said, absolutely. And so it ended up that there's some mutual friendships and family connections and stuff. So we're sitting and we're talking, it was a great conversation. You know, some of those people you just talk to pretty easily. So we're in this conversation about an hour and the bell rings and she says, is that the bell? And I go, yeah. She goes, are there's kids. Let's go see them. So we get up and, and we go off. And she and I could I could feel what she had missed since March of last year, where we're about kids. We're about those connections. And we went out and just sat and watched kids walk by and say hi. And it was just awesome. So it's it's so great when you know you're you're where you should be, and then you can use your powers and passions to make that the best it possibly can be. Yeah. Cool. We've touched on it a couple times in here, but the landscape with 
marketing yeah. and sales and business. Yeah. You know, not that the other courses aren't important, yeah. but that those courses in particular, the landscape since we graduated in 2004, here we are, 2020, 16 years later. I mean, it's night and day mm -hmm. from where we're at. Yeah. So how as a, you know, I guess two parts of it, as a teacher or being a teacher and now a principal, how do you look at the landscape and retool and teach everything that's new out there? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't teach marketing anymore. The class that I teach is more of a character ed class, but I, I have spent time in the marketing class in um, Peer Driven, maybe a company that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. the Two Harbors. Um, their folks have come in, and and when I what I hear and what I, what especially from that social marketing uh, web page design things that I that just weren't around, or at least in the infancy stages when I was doing the full time teaching positions, I'm very intrigued about what all that entails. Um, you know, and just understanding how YouTube works. You know, and how people are making money. I'm and I'm just in awe. And I'm sitting there as kind of a student listening to, wow, if I were to do this now, if I were to teach marketing, I'd have to go back and learn this, this whole new system. But that was the beauty of it. If I would have stayed in it, it was always evolving. And as you asked me, was I, did I, after so many years, was I bored with it? No, because everything was evolving. Everything was changing. And every year there was a new project and a new group of students that coming in. But as far as today goes, that landscape is drastically different. Drastically. I mean, just the analytics of everything is listening to it. I understood what he was saying, but realized that I'd take some time to really process how I would teach it to somebody else. Sure. More or less a big step now, whereas it would have been those small steps. Yes. Yeah, year yeah, to year, you're right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to take it one step further on that one. How do you see higher education changing? Yeah. Being that you're an administrator, you're preparing the next generation of mm -hmm. seniors that are going to graduate. You know, the landscape for college has changed yeah. and technology has made it to the point where if you want to become a, a marketing guru, mm -hmm. you can sign up for a knowledge broker business course, the digital academy course, you can sign up for YouTube courses, you yeah. can really do it all. So I'm curious where you see those two things merging. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely different. I think with just the, the whole need for distance learning to realize that the traditional college university feel sitting in front, hearing a professor, that all can be done distantly. And so from that, the, that landscape has changed drastically. And then the other concept of, you think about college. In, in, in if you go to college, when you decided to go to college, did anybody go, man, what are you thinking? That's a dumb idea, right? Everybody's like, that's a great idea. It's probably the most socially acceptable thing somebody can do. I have a real passion, and I still love working with seniors at Two Evers High School that, like me, are planning to go to college, possibly like me, didn't have a, a mom or dad that did. So there's no background. There's no background. We know the damage kids can get in with credit cards. Do we talk about the damage kids can get in with student debt? Do we talk about the fact that maybe going to this school doesn't make sense because you're going to be out, you're going to be paying $25,000 a year where maybe you start at a two year school and get that AA and transfer in. So that part of the, the college transition, that landscape, I'm always wanting kids to realize, and I've said it today in this seventh grade class, it's my belief you have to do something after high school. It isn't my belief that you have to go to college. If that's what you want to do, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But do it smart. Do it smart. And that was a DECA project we did. You know, it, it, how do we, how do you get, how do you secure scholarships? How do you find money? How do you ensure that you don't bankrupt yourself? Doing something good. I think education is great, right? Yeah. But how do you do it in a way that doesn't doesn't come across? And you know, right now, college debt. Is the word. College <laughs> debt. Not coming in. <laughs> not, not coming in. College debt being one of the largest boat anchors on people today. What the heck? But are the colleges telling you that? I don't think they are. And if you, in my case, with parents that don't have that experience, they need to think of the landscape differently. Because you, like you're saying, you can. I mean, if you if you want to specialize in something. 
go figure out who's doing it, learn the trade and go do it, right? Yeah. And so yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be that four year college track. I think some people are, like you said, so happy that their kids want oh, to go to college. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Go, and then they get into it and you're like, oh, I wish you would have kind of reevaluated a little bit more on this. Yep. You know? yep. But I had my daughter down, um, one of my daughters down and she really, it was, and that was, that's, that's a really fun experience as a father to take your kids on that whole college thing, you know, the whole college experience of where they're gonna go, where they're gonna live. And we got down and the school she really loved was Hamlin. And I, I got there and you talk about marketing, we get there and you know, there's a picture on a future Piper. I'm like, well, look at this, this is awesome. Go stand by your picture, right? Yeah. And they get the t-shirt and they get the sweatshirt and they stay the night with somebody. And that whole experience is fantastic. But I said to my daughter Delaney, it's like, Delaney, you need to look at what this experience is gonna cost you. Is this worth the cost? And as it boiled down, it, 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 I was happy to hear that she saw herself, yeah, dad, this doesn't make sense. And so she was able to go to the College of St. Scholastic, a wonderful school, and will come out of college with little to no debt. That's, I mean, that's awesome. It is, like, yeah, yeah, right. Debt-free community. Yep, yeah. And I have another, my youngest daughter, who was absolutely about going to a two-year school. Absolutely, I said, that's, I, I totally support that idea. And then I said, but here's the thing I'm gonna make you do. I don't care what the four-year college is, select one. Just so you have some options. And, and my youngest daughter is more of a homebody, where my middle daughter would be more of, let's go, you know, she's living now in Dow, in, down in Texas. And so she's much more, of, let's go see the world, where my younger one is more of the homebody type. I said, but I don't care where it is, select one, for your college, and she selected the College of St. Scholastica. She, and I said, all right, now we're gonna go through the scholarship process. She ended up getting an award letter, and she said, Dad, I got over $100,000 in scholarships. How do I turn this down? I said, you don't, <laughs> you, you don't. Right. And so from that perspective, it's that, it's that landscape that's changed. I think the colleges realize that they're gonna have to do their business differently. And from that perspective, uh, I think it's been a great experience for both of my kids, but it has to be something where they're not coming out with just tremendous debt. And that's kind of like what you said, uh, an earlier question, like you kind of know what leverage to pull at the yeah. right time. Like that's a perfect example of it. It's not a tough love, it's not a motivation, it's, it's a, pulling the right level, yeah. lever yeah. one even like, yeah. you can do this, but also try this out, and, right. you know, options, right. you know, Absolutely. so that's kind of cool. Absolutely. It sounds like we're probably going to have to have you back on this podcast to talk about for any of the parents that are listening, <laughs> um, how to obtain yeah, scholarship yeah. money because that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, you know, and it, 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 it's, again, I, I <laughs> did, where did you go to school? Did you go to UWS right away? No, I went to uh, LSC. LSC. Okay, yeah, yeah. And started out there, got my two-year AA. Yeah. Um, I did actually go on to UMB mm -hmm. for a semester, mm -hmm. and I quickly found out that being in a lecture hall of 300 people, that was not how I learned. Yeah. Um, I made a quick transfer out, went yeah. to UWS, yeah. and 20 people in the classroom, yeah. I could jive with that. Yeah. I yeah. you know, got that special attention, that one-on-one, right. one, yeah. that was very similar to high school, yeah. a community college. Right. To, yep. yeah, was, Gotta know that environment that you're gonna mm -hmm. prosper in for sure. Yeah, yep, yeah. it was a huge difference for me. I remember leaving Denfell in 1988 and going to UWS and driving across the bridge to UWS to register for classes. And I walk in and I forget my advisor's name and I said, hi, my name is Jay Bell Castro. You're in my advisor. I need to register for these classes. The guy looks at me and goes, I got a tea time in 20 minutes, not today. And I'm like, okay. And I get drive over the bridge. And my mom goes, well, what class are you taking? Oh, the guy had a tea time. <laughs> I got to go back tomorrow. And I, I remember, I, I had no idea what to do. That wasn't right. You don't say to me, I got a tea time. What the heck? So you know, I didn't say. <laughs> That's right. Push back the tea. But, but I'm not knowing the process. And, you know, certainly with my girls, they realize, and the kids that I love working with on this topic is, you're a customer. I was a, I was paying money. Yep. You don't push me out the door. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know. and, I, and I had a miserable. I mean, I think UWS is a great school, so I don't want to put them down. But for me, at that time, it was not the right spot. Left there, went to Johnson Wales in Providence, Rhode Island, on a DECA scholarship, 
and all of a sudden I found my absolute home, small classes, intimate settings, in a place that I could prosper. And, and I went from being on, don't put this one in there, but I was on academic uh, probation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> academic probation at UWS to the Dean's List. But again, it was kind of like that, that, as we started, that experience of walking into that first marketing class, walking onto that campus, just had a feel. It had a great feel and a feel of success, and I was just able to kind of merge in. And uh, yeah, I you know, was able to graduate with honors. Not that that means a whole bunch, but the reality is that I was able to find success there. And I think that that's ultimately what you're, hopefully your, your kids are gonna find is, you know, in this new, who's gonna help them navigate through that? I think actually even like the graduating with honors, I think people that are at a certain point, not to go back to that, but if you're at a, at a lower point and yeah. you have gotten yourself from yeah. so, such a big gap that you've been yeah. able to overcome, right. that actually says a lot. Yeah, you yeah. Know? for sure. So For sure. And surrounding your people, you know, surrounding yourself with people that want to be successful yeah. and finding that yeah. right place to be at, you can really thrive. Yeah. It's, you know, and, and I think back and I think that this is just so germane for everything. The difference between those two institutions was when I got to Johnson and Wales, they made me feel special. Whatever that's worth, for me it was worth a lot. So any kid that came in to look at the school from the Midwest, they'd say, Jay, we want you to spend time with this kid. All right, so you're asking me? How cool is that, right? Yeah. And so I think it's it's so important you know, in business to realize if, if 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 you make somebody feel that, but it's got to be it's got to be it's got to be unique in the way that it can't be a cutty, cookie cutter because everybody can see through that. But if you can find that way to, to pull the strings to make somebody feel special in a unique way, and you truly feel that that's the characteristic, boy, that's successful. You know, there's a if I could have taken my classes on a field trip. One would have been really cool is this place called A Street Video on 9th Street, a video store. You guys remember, I used yeah. to share the story yeah. in class. Yeah. And this guy knew something about everybody walking into a video store? What would that guy have done selling condos or sell, I mean, selling anything? Yeah. He, he had the ability to make the connection. And I think that that's, connection is, is everything. I can't agree more. We talk about it all the time. I always talk about finding commonality. Yeah. When I go into a place, and whether I'm selling elevators, which I'm doing right now, or it was staffing, recruitment, you know, paying attention to just little things and listening and finding out what makes that other person tick, it was huge because then I could go back and I'd be like, hey, next time I stop in, I bring back a licorice. Hey, I saw that you were eating, you know, yeah, yeah, Twizzlers yeah, from the yeah, big box. So yeah. I bought you another one because I noticed it was getting empty. Yeah, yeah. Hey, here you go. Here's my card. If you yeah. ever need anything, yeah. you know, they may not have needed me at that point in time, yeah. but guarantee later down the road yeah. they would remember me and be like, yeah. Matt, yeah. you better bring some more licorice now because <laughs> we're gonna need some people. So yeah. let's talk. Very cool. Absolutely. Or even people just just remembering something about someone, yeah. a story yeah. you told, or yes. a tidbit of something. Yeah. Like, because not a lot of people remember those right. things either. And, and, it's like, and impressed when you do. Yeah. Impressed when you do. Yeah, they kind of give you that look, like, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, that's kind of cool, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, absolutely. So, last question that I have: If there's one piece of advice that you give, maybe it's parents listening, maybe it's somebody who is you know, on the verge of you know, not wanting to take that leap or they haven't found their fire yet, do you have one piece of advice or one motto that you stand by? You know, without sounding like a cliche, I think, I think really the big thing is, is what, what makes you smile? What gives you that purpose? And keep moving until you find it. Don't, don't settle for, you know, the, the security of the job or the income of the job, what what is gonna get you up and get you thinking that I'm gonna make a difference today if it's in this organization, if it's with this student or with this group of people. It's gotta be something where you get up and you feel like inside, this is what you're supposed to do. And, and when you don't have that, don't do it. Simple enough. If you don't have that, don't do it. Move on until you find it. And I think that that's the part of society that you can get stuck, you know. My my dad, 
I watched him kind of hate his job, hate getting up every morning, and I hear it, you know, oh. it's like, really? You're doing this for how many years? Come on. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, like I said earlier, the 17 years I got to spend it too. There were, not every day was fantastic, but uh, most of them were. Most of those days were pretty cool. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate you sitting down with us and you've given us a number of topics to bring back up and touch on later on. I mean, this was great. This was incredible. Good. Next up, Financial University. <laughs> We're going to teach kids how to get scholarships. Uh, I want to, yeah. No, I, I just, I think it's, uh, this, you have no idea how, how special this is for me to have you guys here too. I mean, this, this is really neat to see you guys going and, you know, like you said, you're, you're going to go up and you stop talking, start doing. And it's pretty cool to see that. So this has been fun for me as well. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for listening today, guys. That was a, a pretty exciting interview that Matt and I had with uh, Jay. Uh, he is always very well spoken and he just really gets his point across, but he also can kind of get you excited and motivated no matter what the situation, because we were just sitting in his kitchen and by the time Matt and I were done with this interview, we were pretty juiced up and we're like, that was awesome. We really enjoyed it. And I hope you guys did as well. Um, for me, I hadn't seen Jay for quite a few years and it didn't matter. We sat down and we got to chatting and talking just like it was five years ago or just like it was when we were back in high school. So either way, it was a great episode. I know for us, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And thanks again to Jay.